In this video, we will start talking about how to make a forecast when there is seasonality and a trend. And as we will see in upcoming videos, there's a pretty straightforward five-step process that we are going to follow to do that. Um, so what do we mean by seasonality? It's not like an economic cycle that might come and go and no one can predict the timing of it. The important thing about seasonality is that it is predictable. So we know when winter is going to come, generally speaking. So seasonality could happen along a timeline of a year. Back to school sales always happen at back to school time. Uh, seasonality could happen along the timeline of a quarter. Um, Sometimes at the end of a quarter, there's always a big push to sell more product to our customers. So there could be quarterly seasonality. There could be monthly seasonality. Customers buying more food, more groceries, more necessities at the end or beginning of a month when they get paid. Um, we could also have weekly seasonality. So for example, um, restaurants, coffee shops tend to be busier either on weekdays, if they are in a more of a central business district sort of location, uh, and bars and things tend to be busier on the weekends. So we can have seasonality that could happen on any of these timescales, but it's all predictable. We know when Friday is going to happen this year, this week, for example. So there's that. Um, then there's a bit about um, terminology of what do we call some of these things. Um, so we're gonna be computing some things that you could call seasonal indexes or perhaps indices is the proper term for that. Um, you might call them seasonal factors. Um, you might call them seasonal relatives. Those all mean the same thing. Seasonal index, seasonal factor, seasonal relative, they all mean the same thing. And then um, when we talk about how things change as a result of the season, there are basically two different ways we could talk about it. One would be that every summer we add 20 more units worth of sales. That would be an additive model where the summer is always a certain number of units above the other months. We won't look at it that way. We will talk about a multiplicative seasonal index. So we'll calculate an average and then we will say that the summer is always 20% higher and the winter is always 30% lower. So we are going to focus on multiplicative seasonal indexes or factors or relatives. Um, and uh, so that's a little bit of terminology there. So the, the five-step process here, first thing we're gonna do is calculate these seasonal indexes and um, we'll see how to do that in a minute. Then secondly, we'll take the original data and we will divide each data point we have by the seasonal relatives that we've calculated and create a de-seasonalized version of the data. Then we'll take that de-seasonalized data and we will estimate the trend using linear regression. So that's step three. Step four, take the outputs from the linear regression and project the trend, the growth rate out into the future. And then step five, take that straight line forecast that we made in step four and multiply it by the seasonal indexes to get the seasonal forecast. So calculate the seasonal indexes to see how much a particular period is above or below what we would otherwise predict. Then try to take seasonality out of the model by dividing the original numbers by the seasonal indexes. Then we do a linear regression on the deseasonalized numbers. And then we take that linear regression, project it in the future, and then multiply it by the seasonal indexes to get our final forecast. I hope this has been helpful.